Hi there, my name is Dr. Ian Smythe and I've been asked to tell you a little bit about assistive technology, but maybe with a difference. When I say to you assistive technology, what do you think of? You probably immediately think of text-to-speech, speech-to-text, concept mapping. Maybe if you're really up to date when it comes to concept mapping, you think of the, the new materials that are out there, like the online stuff. Maybe you're using iMindMap or Webspiration, MindMeister. Maybe you've even got MindMaker or MindBree on your, your iPhone or your BlackBerry. But that's not the limit of the problems of the dyslexic individual. So what I'm going to do is try and show you, inspire you to think a little wider. Some of the other issues that can be addressed by technology, and a lot of what I'm going to tell you is free, and how you can address other problems. Okay, let's take for example a phone call. Used to be nice, simple, get on the phone, talk, put the phone down, and what did they say? Forgotten. Memory problem. But what if you use Skype? Did you know that with Skype there are lots of different services out there where you can record to Skype? It doesn't matter whether it's just the sound or the video, you can record it. You've got things like CallBurner or Pamela. These are excellent programs. And before you run away for your pen to write all these down, on this website you will find a link to download the websites to go to. Go to. Dyslexia friendly, giving you all the notes. So just listen and then download the links later. What about, for example, you're trying to work out a new piece of software? You're having problems. I remember with a friend of mine trying to explain how to use Microsoft Word. I'd been using it for years, knew, no problem. I knew what menu to drop down, but they didn't. I say, go to file, and they say, what file? I say, no, the word at the top, top left. No, the other left. Okay, so you've got a drop down menu with lots of things there, no. And it can be very frustrating for both parties. What if you could have a way where you are looking at the other person's screen? There are some wonderful software, free, out there that you can use. You've got things like uh, TeamViewer, you've got Mikogo and several others. You can look at somebody else's screen and you can even take it over so you can help them. Great for tutorials, for assisting, learning something that's actually on the web. Most people will think, if you've got a lot to read, maybe you should turn it into text-to-speech. How many people think that maybe we could summarise the text instead? Cut down the number of words? Yes, there are pieces of software out there, such as Summarizer, which will cut down the number of words by the number that you want. Microsoft Word even has that inside the program. I've tried it. It's not perfect, but it's remarkably good. So you could start off with 10,000 words and then reduce it to 2,500. Then you can play it with your text-to-speech. What about you've got a hand in a piece of coursework, an essay, a project, anything? Have you ever missed a deadline? Have you forgotten about it? Have you thought that online there are lots of systems where you can put in the date and it will send you an email the day before, an hour before, or whenever you specify? If you want to pay a bit more, it will even send you an SMS. Oh, I should be at that meeting. It's done automatically. You can, of course, have timers on your computer. You can have timers to remind you birthdays. Ever forgotten a birthday? Remind pops up and tells you. A clock tells you to stop on a certain project after so many minutes, so many hours. Or even you can get a piece of software that, oops, you keep going into the browser and looking on the internet and you lose track of, not, of time. There's a piece of software out there that'll stop you doing that. It's called Keep Me Out. Stops you going into your Twitter, into your Facebook. Can you remember all your passwords? Where are they? How good is your memory? 
Do you ever get to that point where you're supposed to put it in? You've known that password all the time and it's, oh, it's gone. There's software out there where you can save your passwords offline or even online. The advantage of online means you can get it anywhere. What about backup? How often do you back up? How often those dyslexic individuals you work with maybe, how often do you remind them to back up? I know two people who were doing their PhD. Their computers crashed one week before they were supposed to hand in their PhDs. Fortunately, they had backups all over the place with friends. But imagine if you're doing work and your system crashes. Backup. Things like Dropbox. It's out there. It's free. Just use it. Have you ever gone into Google and thought, I just need to research for, oh my goodness, look at all these words that have come back. Wouldn't it be great to use a visual representation of a search? There are websites out there that you can use, like Search Me. Great, visual representation. What about if you get lost? Another little one. Quite simple, use something like the Google Latitude or Zing. These are so sophisticated now that you can take a snapshot on your smartphone, send it to somebody and they know where you are. You don't have to know, but because of the snapshot, it'll go to the person, maybe even a taxi driver, and they will come and find you. There is so much technology, there's so much assistive technology, technology that's there for you to help you overcome your problems. And it's brilliant. It's what good's for the dyslexic is actually good for everybody else as well. So go out, try it, experiment it with it, share it, explore it, see what's there. You'd be surprised. It's wonderful.